Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. <music> Taliban announced formation of the caretaker Afghan government. In Mississippi, denial about COVID-19 and its vaccine has led to an increase in hospitalizations. Soldiers in Guinea have detained former President Alpha Conde and have dissolved the government in a coup d'etat. Jacob Chansley pleads guilty to one felony charge related to his participation on the riot on Capitol Hill this past January. On the 1,000-day anniversary of the arbitrary detention of Canada's two Michaels in China, civilians as well as diplomats joined in on a march in Ottawa. In Israel, six Palestinian imprisoned militants escaped out of a high-security Israeli prison. Fully vaccinated international travelers will be welcomed to Canada. The Taliban announced the first members of a caretaker Afghan government on Tuesday, naming Mullah Mohammad Hassan Akund as acting prime minister and Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar as acting deputy prime minister. The temporary cabinet is dominated by senior old guard Taliban officials, including the leader of a Haqqani network, a faction of the militant group designated as terrorist organization by the U.S. Many have been waiting to learn the new makeup and policies of the Islamist government before deciding whether to recognize the Taliban as the legitimate rulers of Afghanistan. Over in Mississippi, misinformation about COVID-19 has made it the least vaccinated state in the U.S. The low vaccination rates have led to an increase of hospitalizations that are overwhelming medical workers within the state. These workers have expressed frustration and exhaustion because residents refuse to accept the COVID-19 vaccine. Both the intensive care unit and the emergency room are filled beyond capacity, mostly with COVID-19 patients. In Guinea, soldiers detained President Alpha Conde on Sunday following hours of gunfire that could be heard near the presidential palace. Since the coup d'etat, the country has closed its borders and the military has declared the constitution as invalid. Leading up to the coup d'etat, Conde's popularity greatly declined after he attempted to run for a third term, claiming that the term limits were not applicable to him. Moreover, many were frustrated that the poverty in the nation had not been improved under Conde's rule despite the plentiful resources of gold and bauxite belonging to the nation. The army colonel, Dombuya, claims that the actions were taken by the military were for the best interests of the people and has promised that their new organization, the National Committee for Rally and Development, are still committed to democratic values. In other news, QAnon Shaman, or Jacob Chansley, entered the U.S. Senate chamber wearing a Viking helmet and a fur vest on January 6th this year. Before leaving the building, Jacob left a note stating, It's only a matter of time. Justice is coming. More recently, Jacob has pleaded guilty to unlawfully obstructing an official proceeding. In Ottawa, the families and friends of Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig, as well as politicians and diplomats, joined in on a march to mark the thousand-day detention of the two Canadian Michaels in China. China has been accused of arresting the two Michaels as a form of hostage diplomacy following Canada's arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanshu. The march, which took place on September 5th, was 7,000 steps, mirroring the number of steps that Michael Kovrig reportedly takes each day in his prison cell. In a rare display of solidarity, U.S., British, European Union, German, and Australian diplomats joined in on the march, condemning hostage diplomacy. While Michael Spavor was convicted for 11 years, Michael Kovrig is awaiting sentencing. Turning to Israel, six Palestinian prisoners have escaped a high-security prison. The six men apparently exploited a flaw in the prison system and tunneled the way out of the prison. Moreover, while security footage did capture the prisoner's escape, because the security guard in the control room fell asleep, the men were able to escape. Of the prisoners that escaped, four were sentenced to life in prison following plans to kill Israelis or for actually partaking in attacks that left Israelis dead. One of the prisoners that escaped was Zakaria Zubadaya the former commander of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, and the other five reportedly belong to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad group. The police have set up 200 checkpoints in their search for the men, whom they believe might be headed towards the city of Jenin. In other Canadian news, fully vaccinated international travelers will be welcomed into the nation on 12.01 a.m. on September 7th for non-essential purposes. Even more, these individuals will not be required to quarantine for 14 days. An exception, however, is for Indian travelers who are banned from traveling directly to Canada until September 21st. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.